Good morning. Good morning to our new students, parents, family, and well wishes joining us on YouTube, as well as to all the presenters joining me here on Zoom. I'm Dr. Hima Venugopal, and I will be the chairperson today as we go through day three of our orientation program. Firstly, I would like to congratulate the new students who have gained admission to this prestigious University of the West Indies and a big welcome to the Faculty of Medical Sciences. You have been introduced to the faculty leadership and our esteemed Dean, Dr. Tom Lim Paul, and also to the student leadership. Now, today is a very important day for you because it introduces you to the different student services that the university has put in place um, as you go through your time with us. Our main address is by Dr. Chambers, who is going to present on adjusting to university life. And then we have the different brief introductions from the different universe, sorry, student services, um, like the examination section, billings and receivable, Office of Student Financing, the UWI Mona Library, placement and career services, and finally, there will be a guide to registration. We're gonna have a short break after that. And when you come back, we'll go straight into the a cultural activity led today by Ms. Kadeen Campbell. So please remember also to post your questions on the chat and the moderators or the facilitators concerned will answer your questions. So without further ado, I'm going to ask Dr. Chambers to begin her presentation. Thank you. Thank you. So welcome everybody. I um, was happy to hear that there may be parents and family members also online with our new students because this really is a family affair, especially so this year. So I am Dr. Debbie Ann Chambers. I'm the head of the University Counseling Services here at Mona. And I'm gonna be talking to you about adjusting to university life. And I'll also be letting you know about the services that we have on Mona to support you. So I'm gonna start sharing screen. All right, so again, adjusting to university life. This is an unprecedented year. We hear that over and over again in news and on social media. And I am really just wondering what it is like for new students to begin the Faculty of Medical Sciences during a pandemic. So if you can make a comment in the comments box below, I'd love to know your thoughts. The reason why I'm asking you this is because maybe you all will learn from each other as you have similar thoughts and feelings, and I will most definitely learn from you. So in the comments box, if you can just one word, let us know what it is like for a new student to begin the Faculty of Medical Sciences during a pandemic. So I've been going around this uh, for the last few months, repeating this quote by David Satchel. And it is that there is no health without mental health. If you do already believe in that, I'm hoping that by the end of this presentation, you'll buy into that and maybe use it as a hashtag on your social media as you encourage other people in your life to um, take care of their mental health. So I'm gonna go through six ways, not eight, to take care of your mental health. Again, I'm, I'm talking about this because there is no health without mental health. And as you know, this school year in particular you will have to take really good care of your health. So let's talk about some of the ways to do that. The first thing, it is normal to feel overwhelmed. We are in the midst of a pandemic. 
And it is really, truly normal to feel anxious. There's so much coming at us. This has been my favorite um, info pick since grad school. All right, there are only two times I feel stress day and night. Stress is a normal part of life, to tell you the truth. If we didn't feel stress, we wouldn't be alive. So the thing is to manage your stress and to be aware of it. I'm seeing in the chat, by the way, that we have some responses on our chat. So far to begin as a new student, it's stressful. Yep, here we are. Chaotic, terrifying, hectic, not fun, strange, stressing bad. It's stress bad. All right, so I'm hoping to help you with this today. While I go through the slides, I want you to notice what shimmers to you. That's my cute word. Shimmers just means whatever jumps out at you. If you can take away one thing from this presentation and pledge to yourself that this is what I am going to do for this academic year to help with the stress, the chaos, the hectic feelings, the strange feelings, that would be really great. So again, the first thing is just to acknowledge that it's okay to feel overwhelmed, all right? It's normal to feel anxious. When we fight those feelings, we make things worse. When we believe that we have to be quote unquote strong, whatever that means, or we're not entitled to feeling vulnerable, that's usually when the problems begin to start. All right, I see more things coming through. Hoping it doesn't last until graduation. I hope so too. Anxiety inducing. So I'm hoping you've already picked up that it's okay to feel anxious, that anxiety is normal. It's what are we going to do to manage it? Weird for sure. All right, so let's go to the next slide. In addition to just acknowledging your feelings, your stress and anxiety without judgment, we also have to acknowledge that your programs of study, I think especially during this year are intense ones and things will keep changing as we adjust to this COVID-19 pandemic. I know here at the counseling center, we've had to change how we um, schedule sessions, how we do sessions from week to week. So the important thing first is radical acceptance, all right? So I'm encouraging you all to be radicals now in your journey. Radically accepting that things will change. So again, not fighting it, but accepting it. Because when we accept, we're in a better position to be able to plan. When we don't accept or stress goes up, and we're not able to plan well because the amygdala, that part of the brain is taking over and we're in our emotion brain when we don't accept. So the first thing, radically accept that things will change. Please be patient. Be patient with yourselves. Be patient with your family members. Be patient with your lecturers. Be patient with admin. So sometimes you're just going to have to take a deep breath in and out and say to yourself, be patient, be patient. I can do this, okay? The pandemic will end. We don't know when and we don't know how, but it will. So patience is very important. And you will adjust to this new university life. I have seen students just amazingly blossom from the first day of school to the last day of the year. Sometimes I'm like, but you didn't need me. You're doing it quite well, all right? So be patient with yourself. This is a journey and you will adjust. And the next thing I'm gonna encourage you to do is be flexible, okay? As things change, be flexible, all right? So the third point, let me just take a deep breath and I encourage you to take a deep breath to slow down a little bit. I'm hoping that something has shimmered already for you. Something that you can just jot down in your book and say, this is what I'm going to do this year. This is what I'm going to repeat to myself. But here is a really big one and it is about balance. 
there are many aspects to ourselves. There is the social, which is taking a hit for many of us right now, the emotional, career and academic, intellectual, physical, spiritual, and many other parts. This is just one graph. So the thing that I'm going to encourage you to do is check in with yourself and go, how am I in each of these areas of my life? I have seen students in the Faculty of Medical Sciences, when they are out of balance, get extremely stressed, and that can lead to a whole host of other problems. But when they're in balance, things go much smoother. Okay, so it's just a check in with yourself, maybe each day, the beginning of the day or the end of the day, and say, how balanced was I today? Did I pay attention to my physical self? Did I do some activity? Did I pay attention to my spiritual self in whatever, whatever spirituality means to you? Did I reach out and say hi to somebody today? Did I check in with my emotions? Am I considering to myself, you know, how is my career planning going? Is this what I still want to do? And how am I doing in terms of my academics? Just check in once a day or once a week, if once a day is too much and kind of just rate yourself. I had a mentor who told me to rate myself on a scale of zero to five, zero meaning I'm making no attempt to um, take care of this aspect of my life, five meaning I'm aware of it. I'm working on it. So just rate yourself at the end of the day. If you want to silently rate yourself no, I would encourage you to do so. So balance again is very important. The next thing, and this was on our balance slide, is about social support. So though we're doing our social distancing, or as some people like to call it, our physical distancing, it's really important to remember that social support is part of being human. So reach out to people, say hi, text, WhatsApp, call, email, wave, say good morning, whatever you need to do to remain socially supported is very important. And when you give social support, it also feels really good. So as you begin your intense programs of study, as you adjust to everything you're putting in the chat and you told me about stress and chaos and adjustment and all of that, please don't forget social support. No, I'm gonna tell you something I've been thinking a lot about. One of the things that you're going to be challenged to do is to set boundaries, right? So in your own social life, as you take care of your health and your mental health, as you seek support and give support, boundaries will be really important. You don't have to answer every phone call and you don't have to respond to every need. Let me say that again. You don't have to answer every phone call and you surely do have to respond to every need. And I'm saying this to the new students, I'm saying this to the parents, to the family members, to the faculty members and to administration. Boundaries really, really important. And a wise person once told me, if you set a boundary with somebody because you need to, and that person flares up or doesn't have a good response to your boundary, guess what? It was indication that you needed to set a boundary with this person in the first place. So no guilt and no shame. Setting boundaries is really important. And that's part of social support when we accept that other people have boundaries and we respect that. And we support them in the setting and the keeping of their boundaries. All right, this is a popular one too. This I actually, let me go back, learned from a student. When I was in grad school, one of the students as I was tutoring said this to me, the closed mouth doesn't get fed and I've never ever forgotten it. So listen to me now, you have a right to ask questions in class. We know we're in this new online dispensation, but you have a right. You have a right to seek academic advising and you most definitely have a right to ask for help. 
Some of us, like myself, who are on the shyer side, will say, well, maybe I shouldn't, or maybe I don't have a right, but you do. So if this is a thing that's shimmering to you today, just write it down. You do have a right to ask for help. And the closed mouth does not get fed. So if you've asked for help, you've sought support, sought academic advising, relied on your techniques to help you emotionally, spiritually, physically, but you're finding that things are not going so well for you. You're finding that all the things that you put in the chat about anxiety and stress is continuing to elevate such that you're not able to do your work. Maybe you're not getting out of bed. Maybe you're isolating yourself from others. That's a popular defense mechanism among students to isolate. Maybe you're starting to take risky behaviors to go out, to drink more. Um, you're smoking more, you're having um, unprotected sex, you're having more of that because you're trying to feed a need, it may be time for you to ask for professional help. So here at the University of the West Indies, Mona, and also on Western Jamaica campus, we do have psychologists. So we have four psychologists here on main campus, and we also have a psychiatrist, and we provide a whole host of services from consultations to individual counseling to sexual harassment advising and the sexual harassment advisor to guys um, to psychiatric assessments, medication management, and the list goes on. I'm just gonna touch on two. One is psychiatric assessments and help or psychiatrist, Dr. Nyamiche Richards is very passionate about destigmatizing psychiatric illness. Okay, and she's a real advocate for students on campus. So if you have a pre-existing mental illness, let us know who you are and I'm gonna give you the number soon. Let us know who you are. If you're already seeing a psychiatrist, that's fine. Just let us know who you are so that we can advocate for you if needs be. Um, so that's really very important. Another thing that we do is that from time to time, we have to give students waivers for exams when appropriate. That's the key word. So sometimes students will come in and because of a psychiatric issue, because um, of a sudden trauma in their life, or sudden death in their family, they're not able to sit exams. The university does not um, put a big stick over you and say, well, yes, you must sit the exams even if you're not medically well, right? You can seek out our support. We will have to do an assessment to see if you qualify and we can advocate and ask for um, exam waivers. The only tip is this. Remember, I talk about ask for help ask for help early. If you go into your exam and you sit your exam, there's nothing we can do after that point. So after that point, in the middle of your exam, you realize, you know what, the panic attacks, you should not have come in. When you come to us after, we can't do anything. So please seek help early. In terms of our numbers now, I promise to give you our numbers. We serve students, staff, and staff dependents on campus. Our number is 876-970-1992. You can call that number, find out more about our services or set an appointment. We also have a UE Health line, by the way, where a trained counselor um, is on the line and the trained counselor can respond to text, calls, or WhatsApps when people really just want somebody to feel out, uh, to listen to them. So somebody on the chat says, stress bad, right? So when you're stressed bad, 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 and you want to just reach out to somebody, maybe anonymously, you can reach out to our help slide. Um, the number is 876 294 Four, two. This is a 24-hour line. 
However, we have one counselor on that line. So if the counselor does not get back to you right away, she is supposed to get back to you within 24 hours. So I hope you feel supported and know that you can ask for help. All right, one more thing now that I want to share with you. And this is a big one, especially for those of you, the faculty of medical sciences in my experience working with you. The thoughts in your head are not always correct. Do not always believe them, especially the negative ones. Sometimes we have put a whole lot of pressure on students. Oh, the quote unquote bright students supposed to be in the faculty of medical sciences. So when you find yourself struggling, you begin to say, I'm not worthy. I shouldn't be here. I'm not that bright. I'm not going to make it. All right. Or society puts a lot of expectations on our um, students in the faculty of medical sciences and elsewhere too. But I'm speaking to you today. So I'm really going to hammer this in. The thoughts in your head are not always correct. Do not always believe them, especially the negative ones. Become curious about your thoughts. Ask yourself, is there evidence for this thought? Okay, I didn't do so well on one exam, but I did fairly well or well on the others. So does that mean that I'm quote unquote stupid or not bright? It doesn't. So do always believe those thoughts. Learn to challenge them. And then the last point that I have, be kind to yourself, all right? You're going through something, guess what? No other cohort has been through here at the University of the West Indies, Mona. You are starting your academic career in the midst of a global pandemic. So guess what? You have every right to be kind to yourself, to take breaks when you need to, to breathe when you need to, to seek support, to take a time out and find balance in your life. If you find yourself studying, this comes up a lot for, um, for students I've worked with in the Faculty of Medical Sciences also. You find yourself beating book all night and somebody will say, why don't you take a break and go to sleep? And then you say, no, I can't because everybody else is studying 14, 15 hours. The thing is, if you don't take a break, the brain will do what the brain does when there are way too many stress hormones floating, right? The brain will kind of shut down and your memory will be affected. When I say shut down, your memory will be affected. You will sometimes freeze. So please be kind to yourself. That's a necessary thing in your pursuit of excellence. Taking a break is a must. So for all of you out there, thank you for listening to me. I hope something shimmered. I hope you wrote down those numbers um, for the University Counseling Service. The numbers, by the way, are also the same for Western Jamaica campus. And I do hope in the middle of everything going on that you will have a wonderful, wonderful year. Thank you very much, Dr. Chambers. That was a very informative presentation. And I hope that the students did take all the contact numbers and took down their notes to help them remember the points that you gave them. Okay. Thank you very much again. You're welcome. So um, my time in university, although it was a long time ago, um, what I had was a good group of friends around me. So we were able to talk about Our stresses around you, I think, is very important. So, next, we are um, having a presentation from the Assistant Registrar of, of Examinations, Mr. Kevin Tai. So, um, let me introduce Mr. Tai for his presentation. Uh, thank you very much. Good morning, everyone.
Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, wonderful. Good morning again, um, colleagues. Good morning also. Students, welcome once again. It, it, it is, it's an interesting time. And just now when I logged on, I was wondering where you guys are. I get to understand that we're streaming on YouTube. So I'm happy to know that we have you all active and up and running. Um, you know, one of your key reasons that you're here is for you to be examined. And this semester will be a very interesting one because then your assessment may not take the traditional form of assessment as you may have heard, you know, your colleagues before or your past students. So it's gonna be important that you pay attention to every information that is gonna come at you, especially anything that has to deal with our oh, your availability platform. That is going to be your guide this semester. Uh, and if we're gonna deviate back to the norm, then obviously you will be advised. But let me just take you through what the exam section does. Uh, you know, our three core function is that examination. You know, we process results. We also manage the graduation ceremonies. And for all academic history, for every student that has passed through us, past, present, and even the future ones, we manage as well. But what I understand over time is that many students don't take the time out to go through the regulations. And that has, that's a general regulation, which is posted on our website. You, know, you can access those through the UA exams website. But also what is key is your faculty regulation. Both goes hand in hand because for each discipline, there are some unique differences that will govern each student. So, you know, MBBS student, the faculty regulation may be different, a little bit different from the BB Med side. And those requirements you need to understand because as you take your exams or you pass or fail a course, that will dictate how you progress in the program. And what we find over time is that many students take it for granted and don't read thoroughly the regulation. And this time around, it's, it's going to be very important that you pay attention not only to those two regulations, but other pertinent information, especially when their assessment time comes around. Uh, we have done two sets of exams via online, online I take home, synchronous and asynchronous. And the results have been a little worrying based on the fact that many students think it was a time for them to have a one-on-one -on -one with their colleagues, um, not adhering to the rules that we put in. And that resulted in many students coming up for an irregularity. And that's a little bit worrying, you know, especially when you guys are in a particular discipline, you know, ethics is important. And if you cannot be honest with yourself, then when you go there in the work world, you know, you expect that level of honesty from you. And we are asking you from early, do not pick up those bad habits that previous students may have passed down, you know, and, and we all know that the bad habits seem to make you a little better individual. But when you get out there and work, if you don't know it, you really don't know it. Remember, so you guys are doing a professional degree and it's costly as well. And as much as it costs you, you put in the work to be here today. So you need to put in the work to ensure that when exam time comes around, no matter the form of assessment, you do it and do it well on your own initiative, you must ensure that you uphold the regulation as we will ensure that the regulation is uphold as well. So as much as how I'm stressing on the regulation and assessment, you know, the exam section also facilitates students who want transcripts, status letters. Um, you know, we, district, we are the ones that manage the graduation, as I said before, we, are the ones that print your certificates. Um, we're the ones that ensure that your marks are on time. 
released on time. We facilitate requests for go through and remark. And on those two notes for go through and remark, you know, over time we have had an interesting request for remark. And a, re a remark is if you're unsatisfied or even satisfied with your grade, but think that you have done better, you can request a remark. And we ask an independent examiner to look over your work. But what we find over time is that many students whose final assessment is via multiple choice asking for a remark. And as much as how the regulation allowed for you to request a remark, if you do an exam and it's 100% MCQ and it's even marked automatically, there's nothing for you to remark. But you know, the regulation still allow for you to make a request just to probably appease the fact that you know, things are done properly. But we facilitate those requests and they'll go through is a one-on-one -on -one with your lecturer. You know, if you're not satisfied with your results, you can make a request for a go through and he or she will sit down with you and you know, let you know where you have gone wrong or where you're going right. Also, the exam section manages all the venues on the campus when you come on to exams. And what we find over time, let, you know, let's assume that we go back to a face-to-face -face, um, modality of assessing exams. Students on a whole seem to come to exams late. And those students, more often than not, are the ones who will miss an important announcement. And then, you know, when the result time come out, they say that they are done unfairly and stuff. So we are asking you guys, whatever you do, do it timely. Be on time for everything that you're going to do. Even if the assessment is online, don't wait on the last minute to log on. Don't wait on the last minute to submit your assignment because then it affects you greatly when the time is up and you're going to ask us to give you an extra time to do your exam. Um, uh, other than that, we publish the timetable. It's always done online. Under normal circumstances, you would have gotten an e-exam card from us. But given the COVID situation, we had to tweak how our timetable is done. So what we encourage students now is to check the website for any updates in the timetable. Meta exam, especially the MBBS, you know, is normally standard dates to set. So there's no never normally any deviation from what is on the first draft of a timetable. But we encourage you to check the timetable up to the last minute because then any changes being made will be made on a timetable. Um, yeah, I, th I think that covers most of what we manage, especially given the time. We're happy that you're here, happy that you chose us just the same. And we do look forward to serving you. Uh, the exam section is located at the Annex Building, right in the vicinity of the cashier there. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. Tai. Um, I'm, so, I'm sure the students appreciate uh, how important the examination section is. And you know, when I'm doing course outlines, that is the first thing that they really want to know, um, how are the examinations going to be. So I'm, I'm sure um, your, your presentation was very much appreciated. Thank you very much. Thank you, Azar. Um, our next pre uh, presenter is Deandra Robinson, who is going to speak to the billings and receivables. Ms. Robinson. Hello, good morning. Morning. Everybody hearing me? Yes, we are. Okay, um, let me just take a minute to share my screen. One second. All right, so everybody's seeing the PowerPoint that's on the screen, right? Um, not yet. Not yet. Yes, we're seeing it now. Okay. One second. Okay. All right, so good morning, everyone. My name is DeAndrea Robinson. 
I'm from the Student Administrative Services section, and we're also a joint office with the Billings and Receivables, and we're located in the bursary. Um, so basically, what we do, we're a customer service um, hub for the students. We, from both offices, we ensure that our students are billed and that they're billed correctly. We ensure that when payments are made, they are loaded correctly on the accounts, and these are payments made at the external agencies, whether it is Paymaster, Bill Express, JN, Western Union, Edicom, any one of those places. And we also bill and collect from our external stakeholders. Um, I want to take this opportunity as well to make the distinction between us, which is Student Administrative Services Section SAS, and the Student Administration System. The online system is what the students use when they want to check their grades, when they want to look at their records, when they want to register. And the Student Administrative Services Section SAS is an office of the bursary that handles financial queries. So I just want you guys to get that clear because most times our students get it confused and you know they come to SAS in regards to stuff regarding registration and stuff that we don't handle and it causes a lot of confusion. So I wanted you guys to have that clear, All right? So getting right into the presentation, there are three main charges that are placed on students' accounts. You have the tuition charge, and that is based on the program and how the student registers, whether it's full-time or part-time. You have the miscellaneous fees that covers the services that are offered by the university. And then there is the residence fees, and that is based on the hall that the student wishes to reside on. So the commitment fee, um, we all should know this fee by now. It is a $20,000 deposit um, that would have been required, was that would have been a pre prerequisite for you guys to register. Um, the deadline to pay that was actually July 31st. Something to note about the commitment fee is that it is an unfundable fee. So let us say you accepted the offer. Um, you, for some reason, you decide that you know you're no longer going to take up this offer. Um, so in that case, the commitment fee will be non-refundable. Um, something to note as well, even though it says fee, it's a payment, it's a deposit to your account. So it can be used to offset your fees, whether it is tuition or miscellaneous, it can be used to offset the charges that are on your account. An example I always use, let us say your fees for the year total $200 and you pay the commitment fee of $20, all you would need to pay to the university is $180. So it is a deposit to your account and all you would need to do is pay the difference once that fee is paid. All right, so how do you find the fees? So you can open any search engine, whether it is Google, Google Chrome, Internet Explorer, any one of those that you use, you can search check fees, you in Mona, and it is normally the first link that comes up. When you click on the link, you will get a screen looking like this. And if you notice the first, the top four links gives you all the, the fees. So whether it is undergrad, postgrad, hall fees, miscellaneous, on that same link as well, you have the option of making payments online. You can also register for your register for courses and you can also use the link to apply it to you. So that link can be used for various things, but most importantly, it can be used to check your fees, right? All right, so I'm going to introduce to you guys the system that is used by our office. It is called the Bursary Online Student System Boss. Um, you can Google UA Boss, any one of your search engines, log in with your ID number, which is your username and your password, which by the default is your date of birth in the format year, month, and then date. Now, what are the services offered via Boss? You're, you have you are able to view your statement of accounts. So you have the tuition side. If you're living on residence, there's a residence side as well. You can apply for the tuition installment plan, the residence installment plan, the, the, the installment plans I'll speak on later on. You can apply for a housing allocation. This is used for when you're living on hall and you have an excess on tuition that you want to transfer to housing. Tuition allocation is the same thing, but in the reverse. 
you can apply for a tuition letter. A tuition letter basically states what your fees are for the year. If it is that you overpay to the university and you have excess funds on your account, you can apply for a refund. You can also apply for a statement to show what your account looks like. And there is also the proxy authorization form. Now, the proxy authorization form is very important. It is used for students who wish to have third parties basically act on their behalf. Now, the university is obligated to the student. There's a confidentiality agreement to the student. So whether it is mommy or daddy or auntie or cousin, anybody that is not the student has to be authorized by the student via bus for us to provide any kind of information, whether it's information on their account, whether it's financial advice that they need, um, whether it is to collect one of, the, one of our financial letters on behalf of the student. If a proxy authorization isn't placed on bus, for that third person, then we would not be able to assist. So it is very important that if it is that you're going to allow somebody to come to the bursary and act on your behalf, that a proxy authorization is submitted for that person. All right. All right, so deadlines. The deadlines, my apologies, the deadlines for payment of fees. So semester one, the deadline was the 1st of September, which was yesterday. And for semester two, it is January 18, 2021. All right, so uh, there are three ways basically of paying fees, right? So you can pay all your fees for the year. So if you pay semester one, you pay semester two, you pay everything by the semester one deadline. That's option one. Option two, you can pay on a semester basis. So you pay all of semester one fees by the semester one deadline. And then when semester two begins, you pay all of semester two fees by that deadline, which is January 18. If this option two isn't actually feasible, what we have, we have a third option, which is the installment plan. And this allows you to pay your semester fees on a monthly basis. So, right, that's where I'm gonna go next. So, what does the installment plan do? All right, well, what are the requirements? You are required to be fully registered. Registration is basically when you go onto the SAS portal and you add your courses for the semester, the courses that you'll be per, um, doing. Once you register, the charges will be placed on your account. These charges are in relation to tuition and miscellaneous. Now, once those charges are on your account, you're required to pay 25% of the tuition charge for the semester and the miscellaneous fee in full. Once it is that you have done those three things, so you register, pay 25%, you pay the miscellaneous fee, then you make your way to the bursary online student system bus, which I introduced earlier, and you submit your application for the installment plan. The installment plan was opened August 24th, and it will close the 18th of September. So please ensure that you have that done as soon as possible. Um, so what you should note, so you pay the 25% to qualify. You're basically dividing your tuition into four, you pay the first 25% to qualify and the, the balance that is left is divided into three where you pay at the end of September, October and November. So the first fee, first 25% in August to qualify or no to qualify. And then the remainder is paid over a monthly basis, September, October, November. And bear in mind, this is done on a semester basis. So if it is a installment plan for semester one, when semester two comes, you'd have to do another one for that semester. All right. So we have, so um, something to note as well, all the services that are offered by the Mona campus, it is accessible on, or by, oh sorry, or Western Jamaica campus. So any service, anything that you need, you can get in contact with our Jamaica, Western Jamaica campus for assistance regarding that as well. 
or payment outlets, you can make payments at the university cashiers, whether it is Mona or West, w West JC. At West, West JC, however, you're only able to use a debit or credit card and a manager's check only. That's the only thing that they're accepting. You can make payments at NCB, JN, Western Union, UE Commerce System, UE Edicom, Paymaster, Bill Express, and you can do a wire transfer as well. And these are island-wide, so you can go to any NCBJ and Western Union, pay Master Bill Express, island-wide. Anyone that is of convenience to you. All right, so it is important that you guys note our payment agencies, because these are the only authorized agencies who are able to collect on behalf of the university. No one else, nowhere else is authorized to collect on behalf of the university. It's very important that you take this information seriously because we have had cases of fraud in the past. So please note these payment agencies and these are the only places that you can make payments, all right? So penalties. Penalties by the university for financial reasons. Um, so why am, it is very important that if it is that you're not going to pay on the deadline that you do the installment plan. If it is that you don't honor your financial obligations, the penalties that will apply are laid fines that will be charged on your account at the end of each month. So for example, the deadline for fees would have been September 1st and you didn't pay by in full, you didn't do the installment plan. What it means is that at the end of each month, a late fine will be charged on the balance that you have outstanding to the university at the end of each month until the balance is cleared. In addition to that, if you don't honor your financial obligation, sorry, you will be unable to sit your exams. You won't have access to your records. And if these balance, uh, balances are outstanding for a prolonged period of time, your information will be sent off to a collection agency who is authorized to collect on behalf of the university. And eventually the information will be sent off to the credit bureau as well. So it's very important that you honor your financial obligations. And if it is that you're unable to do so, all you have to do is contact us, let us know, let us work out something, let us have a conversation. That's what we're here for, all right? All right, so. That is basically the end of my presentation for today. The contact information listed here is listed for our office in Kingston, Mona, and our office in the West JC, West J, our West JC campus, sorry. We're opened Monday to Friday, 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Right now for SAS, Mona, sorry, we're closed for today. We reopen tomorrow and we go up to 3.30 during the um, COVID times. So we're following the directives of the government and we're going to go up to 3.30. Our telephone number is listed. We have emails. So if, if, if the phone doesn't work enough, you can always send us an email and we have WhatsApp as well, which is more convenient. You can send us a WhatsApp. In the West JC campus, if you're not able to go in or call, you can email our contact persons there, Shadien Coates, Natalie Little Singleton, and Yannick Baker. And this is the end of my presentation for today. Thank you very much, Ms. Robinson. That was very informative, and I'm sure the, sh the students appreciated the overview of what your department does. Thank you again. No problem. Our next presenter is from the Mona Library. So if they could start their presentation. Thank you. All right, we're just trying to share our screen. Okay. Okay, can you see our PowerPoint? 
Not yet. Okay, let's see. Can you see it now? Not yet. Oh. Yes, we're seeing it now. Okay, great. Uh, trying to. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Um, from the medical branch library today, we have myself, Teresa Richards, who is the librarian in charge of the medical branch, and my colleague, Mrs. Faith McCoy Johnson, our information literacy librarian. So we are pleased to welcome you and to introduce you to um, the medical branch library and what we have to offer as services to our clients. So the UN Mona Library is a lab the library system consists of the main library, the medical branch, the science branch, and the law branch library, and also includes the Western Jamaica campus branch. The medical branch library is situated on the hospital compound. So even though we are part of the UN Mona Library system, we are physically located on the hospital compound, just a little way up from the Faculty of Medical Sciences um, building. And our opening hours, and note we say until further advice, because as you can imagine in this um, COVID period, we have had to make um, changes to our, our opening hours. So until further notice, we are currently open Mondays to Fridays from 8.30 to 3 p.m. Saturdays, 8.30 to 4, and closed on Sundays and public holidays. Now, let me point out that on a normal circumstances and pre-COVID period, we offered extensive service and access to the library. We were open Monday to Friday, 8.30 a.m. until 6 a.m. the following day, so 22 hours um, on, on weekdays. And we were also open on Saturdays from 8.30 until midnight. And on Sundays, we were open from midday until 8 p.m. Of course, we don't know when we'll be able to go back to those hours, but just to let you know that that's the level of service that the, the library had offered originally until COVID came along. Uh, we will also be offering extensive, extended service as the time goes on, on and when the, um, the national curfew hours are changed, but currently we, we will be closing at 3 p.m. on weekdays. So in terms of staffing, we are a small core of nine. We have two librarians, uh, three clerical assistants, two attendants and two full-time cleaners. We also have assistance by other staff members in the library system um, who work at the medical branch for late duty, weekdays and also on weekends and extended hours. Um, and of course that will depend on when we go back to, to more of those extended opening hours. So what does the library have? In terms of facilities, we have three fairly large reading rooms, um, a computer lab, which has originally had 25 computers, but now again, because of COVID, we have had to make changes. So the computer lab has been uh, reconfigured to, to, um, in, in order to adhere to social distancing. Now we have 11 computers that will be accessible. We will though have two computers that are for print and go. So there'll be printing stations so that patrons may just come in and use those dedicated terminals for printing and, and be able to get your, your um, printed material and go. Whereas the 11 computers will be there for persons who need to actually sit down and do work at the computer. We have internet connectivity, including wireless. So when you bring in your own devices, you'll be able to, you are able to, to um, get access. And we have study carrels, uh, group study rooms, uh, a bit adjusted as well. Uh, normally we would have 
groups of maybe six to eight persons. As you can imagine, we have had to adjust those again in compliance with social distancing, but we still have the group, group study rooms available. We have um, copying and printing, and we have lockers, um, which are available. Uh, you borrow those uh, against your student ID. You also need a valid student ID to come in to the library to do um, to use all of the, the services that are available within the library. And of course, I should add that in this COVID period, in order to get in and while you're in the library, you must use a mask or some other face covering as is the national mandate. In terms of material, we have electronic databases comprising of eBooks, electronic books, electronic journals, we still have printed material. We, as a library, we will always have printed books and journals. We also have exam pass papers. These are available online. And we have our West Indiana collection, material about the West Indies or by West Indians um, in, in that spe um, special collection. We, uh, we have government publications, reference books, and theses. In terms of our core services, um, reference or research assistance, and uh, Prior to COVID, again, we have to keep making the reference. There was um, a, quite a, a, a large um, amount of the, the, the reference work that we do was face-to-face, -face um, but we, we do offer online and email. And as you can imagine, with many of the course, um, the training, the teaching going online, much of our reference assistance will, um, in accordance with that, be, be available online and via email. I point out to you that there is a virtual reference service um, uh, as the librarian and that you can find on the library's webpage. And we have persons who are dedicated, who are scheduled to be online, to be able to, to um, do live chat with you. There are also the facility to, do, uh, to send offline messages and those are also monitored. So you can send us emails and you can avail yourself of the, uh, the live chat um, virtual reference service. Information literacy training is an integral part of what we do, equipping you to find the material you need. And we have training that's um, linked to um, particularly to lectures, to, to courses rather. And these are available throughout the, the semester. And we will be um, alerted as to when these are available. Interlibrary loans, getting material from other libraries because part of the service we offer is not just what we own, it's also providing access to material that we do not own ourselves. And so we, we can borrow material from other libraries as far away as in the United States, or of course our sister campus um, campuses, St. Augustine and Cave Hill. And thesis preparation consultation, primarily of course for graduate students is a large part of what we do um, here in the library. So here we are at the library's website. Um, notice our tagline, access anytime, anywhere. And this is coming to the fore, particularly now in these times when much of what we do, both the, the, the teaching that's done and um, is done online and the, the, the services that we offer are, are done um, uh, online. So you can access the library's material and notice from the library's website, the, the, the drop down box that um, on the resources in the, indicates that we have several tutorials, um, digital collections, we have a list of ebook providers, we have various electronic databases, which we encourage you to use and the, the training that we offer will have, um, help you to be able to use these, these databases efficiently and help yourselves to find the material. Other publications, links to the UA Press, which has electronic material as well, to UA Space, which is a repository for electronic theses and library guides, various subject guides that are a very good resource um, portals for, for, for information. Um, at this point, I'll hand over to Mrs. McCoy Johnson, our information literacy librarian, who will take you through the remainder. Okay, so continuing on, as Mr. Richard said, the library's website is your information portal. So all these links are crucial to your getting access to the different resources. Now I'm going to bring up a live page of the website, the library's website. All right, so this 
when you run the cursor over the resources link here, you'll see all these different links that we highlighted. But here, this search box is actually for UE link, which is like the library's Google. Okay, so when you search UE link, you, okay, I'm gonna just demonstrate it right now. So I'm gonna type health, health promotion. Let's say I'm doing some research on health promotion. I type it right there. Sometimes you get an error message, but you can go ahead just the same. All right. So this is you will link and you'll see where it's a combination of articles and books and so on. Let's say you want it to zero in on the books then you would click over to the left here where it says resource type, click on books. And that would show you the different books that fall under health promotion. And some are ebooks, as you can see where it says view online. And if you wanted to read one of these that are online, then you would just click Let's say I wanted to look at global perspectives on health promotion. I click view online, and then the relevant database would come up and I'd click on it and you'd see the full text of the book. All right. If you wanted to read articles, <clears throat> sorry, articles. All right, let me remove my book filter. Then I could click on articles on the resource type over here to the left. I mean, I don't have to do that. I can just go through, but just to bring up the articles to the top. Okay, and let's say I wanted to read this first article, effectiveness of a health promotion program. I click view online, just the same as for the ebook. Okay, and you'd see the database there okay so they're all the same in terms of accessing the online material now if if you wanted something that was in print then you'd have to look to see where it indicates unfortunately none of these are in print um okay but you would see available and you notice it says St. Augustine, all right? So it means it's not a book here, but it's that's how it would look. Uh, here's one from Mona. Knowledge, knowledge development for health promotion. It says available at Mona Medical Library open shelf and you have these, um, um, this, these call numbers. The call numbers help you to locate the book on the shelf. So when you come into the physical library, you will see the shelves and you see the numbers, you see the range. So you look, right, you look for the, the number of the book that you want to find according to the range that is there and just go along the shelf and you will find it. So it's very important to pay attention to the location of the material that you want, because let's say your book was in the science library then you wouldn't want to be wandering around in the medical library trying to find it, okay? So you will link allows you to see what is in all of the libraries at Mona and all of the libraries at the other campuses. Because as Mr. Richards pointed out before, if there is an item that is at another library on another campus, let's say at Cave Hill, and it's something that you're interested in, then you could contact us and we would make the arrangement with Cave Hill and they would send the book over to you. Well, they would send it to us and we would alert you that it's here and you can borrow it. So you will link is an important resource for accessing information online and in print. And in terms of the print, you're not limited to the physical campus, as we're saying, you can also access information from the other campus libraries. Okay. 
Oops. So if you don't remember the URL for the library, then you can just go on the main campus website, UE Bona website and click on libraries in the web red box and you'll get there. Now, why we are pushing the importance of accessing your information through the library is that yes, while you have Google and other search engines, you when you do a typical search, such as this one here that we're looking at, you're gonna get millions of results. And you know, you, your whole lifetime wouldn't be enough to wade through all those results to identify the ones that are credible, that are from reputable sources, and that are just what you need. Okay, so when you go to you will link now the same we did the same search. You'll notice that yes it's instead of this 300 and odd million you're down to 16,000 but even that is still quite a lot, but you are able to use the filters on you will link to reduce the. Um, number of results that you can get to exactly what you need. And you'll notice I highlighted here peer reviewed journals. These are journals that have been, um, they have been scrutinized by um, scholars and professionals in the field to determine that the articles before they are printed, they are up to standard, okay? And it's the same for scholarly textbooks. I mean, bef before you write a book, you know, well, when you write a book, it has to go through all the different editorial processes. So when you come to UELink, you are able to narrow down your research to credible sources of information. And you notice I also highlighted here resource type. You can identify the kind of resource that you want. Maybe you want to look at a conference proceeding. You have the link right there and so on. And this is an example of an article from a scholarly journal that came from my our search on diet therapy. Okay, so all right, so moving on to some of the databases that are actually what you're searching when you do a UELink search. These are some of the key databases for health sciences. We have Medline Complete, Caribbean Search, because it indexes the West Indian Medical Journal, which is a publication from the Faculty of Medical Sciences. There's also Credo Reference, which is, uh, it, it gives you access to encyclopedia articles, dictionary articles, handbooks, and so on. And it's a very good source of background information. I'm going to demonstrate that in a little while. And you see the other sources, such as the different eBooks, ProQuest, and so forth. No, I need to highlight PubMed and the Virtual Health Library. These two are not um, subscription databases, meaning that UA does not pay for them. The others, when you hear us talk about subscription databases, these are what the university pays for. Um, um, just last year, we spent about 50 million Jamaican dollars on databases. So these things, they're not cheap. They are, they are um, specially curated for academic and scholarly research. So these are the items or the sources that we want you to focus on. Okay. All right. So I said I was going to just do a quick demo. Now, you can search through UELink. You can just do your keyword search through UELink and access your 
articles and so on. But sometimes it's also good to know the individual databases. You can access them individually, separate and apart from you, we link. Um, Credo Reference is one of them. All right, so I'm going to the library's homepage to show you how you can access the databases outside of Ulink. So you go to resources. This is the library's homepage. You run the cursor on resources, click on electronic databases. And then I want to get into Credo reference. So I'm just gonna type Credo and there it is. Now, when you get an error message as you will most likely will, if you're in Google Chrome, click advanced, scroll down, look for the link where it says Credo Reference, R Proxy, UEMONA, et cetera. Click on that. You may have to click one more time. Yes, we have to do it again. All right, and there you have Credo Reference. You can browse, notice it covers a wide uh, variety of subject areas. I'm going to just, okay, yeah. I'll just do the same search, health promotion. Just to show you what it's like. Okay, so you'll notice you have all these articles from different sources, for example, health promotion, from Sage Key Concepts series. You click on it, you'll see the article. And these sources are very good, as I said, for background information when you're doing your research. You know, you may need to get some background information on a topic. It may also lead you to other sources of information and we look at that. Okay, you have Cambridge Handbook of Psychology. So when you look at the different sources where the articles are coming from, you will it will give you an idea of the slant. So let's say, for example, you are a nursing student. You may be interested in this article, which is coming from the Gale Encyclopedia of Nursing and Allied Health. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go back and okay, this is my original search page and you will notice to the right, I have this mind map at the center is health promotion. Sometimes you want to do, you're interested in that topic but you're not so sure what direction to go, this mind map can help you because if you notice, it covers, it has some other um, suggestions as to um, topics under health promotion. So let's say social marketing, for example, you may want to click on that and Social marketing itself also gives you some other suggestions. And to the left, you will see articles that have to do with social marketing, okay? So this is an excellent resource when you're trying to have a more targeted research um, project. And you'll notice that the, the resources, we were just looking at articles, but you may also have videos, okay? And also images that are related to your search. All right, so all of that is from Credo Reference. But remember now, you have to go through the library's website or else you won't be able to access all of these. You'll just see it there, but you won't be able to get in. So once you see the UWI logo, then you know that you are into Credo, okay? So what we did just now is an example of how you can access the databases from the library's homepage. All right, so remember, 
you start at the library's homepage, run the cursor on resources, then you go to electronic databases. And I encourage you to click on all these different links as well. Explore the website, the website because there is so much there for you. Ms. Richards talked about the online chat service that is there, right there on the library's homepage. So if you click on it, you will see li library live support online. So you fill out and ask a question and some whoever is on duty, a librarian will respond to you and you can get some help for doing your research. All right. Okay. All right, so this is just an example of search results from ProQuest, another database that is available to you. Okay. Oh, I should show you PubMed as well because that is important. Okay, so we I mentioned that PubMed is not a subscription database. It's not one of the ones that we pay for because it's free to the whole world. But, okay, it's available from pubmed.gov. It's a source from the National Library of Medicine in the USA. And why it is so important is, as it says here, it comprises more than 30 million citations for biomedical literature. And so let's do a search. Same thing again, I'm just gonna do health promotion. Okay, so this is an example of search results from health promotion. And like any other database, you will link, etc. you have your filters, notice, this is from 1838 to 2020. So if you want to like the last five years, you just drag this thing here down to 2015. Let's see if I can get it. All right. And then it automatically reduces your results to just the last five years. But notice it's a citation database. So everything is, not everything is in full text. However, if you want to get to the full text material, just click on free full text and it will take you there. All right. Also, well, let me just click on one of them. Click on the title and that will take you to the abstract and you'll see the full text link. Click on it. That's at the top right hand corner and you will have the full text of your article. Okay, that's from PubMed. All right, let me go back to the results page and just show you something. Uh, okay, now you'll notice in the filters, you also have different types of sources books and documents, case reports, clinical trials, and so forth. So let's say we wanted to, well, maybe not clinical trial. Depends on the, all right, let me just click on systematic review and see. Okay. All right, so now all we have are systematic reviews under my topic of health promotion. Okay, so you can add other filters just by clicking additional filters and you can select, let's say um, you wanted to look at age, you could select from there or sex, you could select from there. But you'd have to click show, you would have to click on the filter that you want and click show, all right? So PubMed is another excellent resource. And as health professionals, you, you must make yourselves 
um, up to date with PubMed because it is so comprehensive in terms of the citations that are there. If you see something that is not full text and you know it's something that you really want, you can check. It's no guarantee, but you can check your link to see if the library has it. And if not, you can also contact one of us and we can see if there's anybody else, you know, let's say maybe St. Augustine or Cavill or so, who has access to that article. All right. So that is that for PubMed. So it's very important that as health professionals, you have um, information competencies because you need to be able to access relevant, up-to-date scholarly information, whether it's from the databases or from the internet in general, or whether it's print or online and so on. You need to be able to evaluate the quality of health information right, for appropriateness, coverage, credibility, and so on. Effective application of the health information is also a critical part of what you will learn. And very important, ethical use of information. So you don't want to be plagiarizing. You want to be giving credit where credit is due. And all these things the library assists you with. Okay, so the library provides training in these areas, searching the health sciences literature, evaluating the sources, using the sources ethically, keeping abreast of the literature and so on. Health science information, what does it mean for you? It means that the right information will equip you with the ability to make informed decisions. So it's not just to pass exams, but you need to develop the habit of finding credible information so that when you're doing your jobs, you, you have what you need because wrong information, with wrong information, wrong decisions will be made and this will have dire consequences, especially to your clients. All right, so having the right information will help you with effective preparation for getting through your exams and successfully improving your knowledge base and successfully practicing medicine and conducting research to contribute new knowledge and healthcare development. Especially here in the Caribbean, we, we need to not just rely on information from the outside, but we also need to build up our knowledge base here as well. So the research aspect of things is very important, okay? And also you need to acknowledge that graduating from the UE is not the end of learning, but just the beginning of a lifelong learning process. So we recommend that you start by learning how to be a smart researcher. And the first step to that is signing up for the UE Link online training at this um, website, tinyurl.com slash uelink2020-21. Um, and you don't have to write it down now. You can go on the library's homepage because it's there. So these are the available dates and times, September 7, 8, 9, and 10, and 12. And you'll notice that it's 11 o'clock every day. And for September 8 and 10, you also have a 6 p.m. session. All right, so if you go to the library's homepage, right, there you have it. So, if you click on the link here, or you can use the QR code, whatever. 
but you'll get to this page where you register, okay? And you will be sent the Zoom link to get into the training. All right, so we are encouraging you strongly to make use of this opportunity to learn UE link. You don't want to be wasting time having to depend on other people to help you find things. You need to be independent. All right. So that's the end of our presentation. And you can contact us at those email addresses. And we also have a Twitter feed. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Ms. Richards and Mrs. McCoy Johnson for that, um, for that presentation. I'm sure the students will appreciate the plethora of resources that the UE Library has, and hopefully they will do the training and get more involved in utilizing the UE Library. Thank you again. You're welcome. Miss um, Robinson, are you here? I just have a couple of questions to ask you. Can you hear me? Hi, good morning. Yes, I'm here. Yes, uh, one of the questions was, um, I would like to know what is wrong if I'm not seeing any charges to my student account for the year. Okay. Um, I, I am assuming that the person who is asking this question is registered, right? They, they indicated that they registered because you won't see a, a charge on your account until you have registered. Okay, I'm not sure about that. If All right, so if it is that you're registered and you're not seeing the charge on your account, what I'm going to ask you to do is to contact us. Um, it might mean that we might go in, need to go into our system and do a retrigger so that the charges can come on or some invest, investigation needs to be done. So you can get in touch with our office and we will definitely look at that for you. Thank you. One more question. Um, the other question is uh, for those who got accepted on Sunday, 31st of August, 2020, do these deadlines still apply? It's stated that the deadline is 3rd, 4th September. Deadlines for fees? I'm, I'm thinking so. All right, so you, so the person would have been accepted Sunday and they're saying, they're wondering if the, first, the September 1st deadline still applies. Yes. Well, no. In that case, it that we <laughs> it, it would be very um inconvenient for us to ask you to pay all your fees two days later. Um, what I'm gonna ask you to do as well is to just get in touch with us. We can work, we can still work out the payment plan. Um if it is that you're able to pay in full. We can arrange a date for you to do that. Other than that, the only other option is the payment plan. So you can get in touch with us again for us to speak on that. Okay, so um, the question from the first student, she was still registered. So she, uh, you, she, needs to, she needs to contact you. Right, she needs to contact us so that we can investigate the situation and let her know what's happening. Can you just remind them of your contact numbers, please? Right, so... It is 970-6734-970-6756. Email address is customer.services at uwimona.edu.jm. WhatsApp is 876-280-280. 8238. I was wondering if you could just put your contact slide up again. It might be easier. All right. No problem. Give me a second, please. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oops. So is, are you able to see it? Um, not yet. Mm 
You're not seeing it now? No. Oh, boy. I don't know. It says I'm sharing, so I'm not sure. Hold on, let me stop the share and do it again. Okay, share screen. Okay. Share. Yeah, now, thank you. All right. No problem. You can just take down the details. I will give you a couple of minutes to do that before we start our next presentation which is by Ms. Tanya Francis for Creative Services. There's one more question? No? I just see the questions. Um, I don't see the actual YouTube stream. Um, when they post to the chat, I see the question. So I'm not seeing anything else so far. Okay, there's one more question um, that says, after paying some of my fees, an additional expense called foreign exchange adjustment was added. What's that? All right, so the foreign exchange adjustment is basically, so the, the university uses a set rate for the year. And when our students make their payments at whichever location, it might be that when they made the payment, they got it at another rate that is different from what the university is, um, is using. So in that case, we have to make a foreign exchange adjustment on the account to ensure that the account, the figures that they make, or the payment that they make, balances back out with what is on their account, basically. But for further explanation, you can always get in touch with us for us to explain it further. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Robinson. No problem. The students, I hope you've taken the contact details down. You can stop sharing now. All right. Thank you very much. No problem. Okay, I'm going to ask um, Ms. Tanya Francis to start her presentation and she's from Placement and Career Services. Good morning, not sure if everybody is hearing me clearly. We're hearing you. Perfect, uh, thank you so much. Um, I want to thank the Faculty of Medical Sciences for always including placement and career services um, in their activities and events. So we're very grateful for this collaboration. Um, I'm just going to briefly give you an idea of what placement and career services has to offer. Um, our programs and services, we are here, we're mandated to help students transition into the University of the West Indies um, we are here to help you plan your career and to guide you through the process. A lot of times our, our medical sciences students don't think um, they need the assistance from us. And we offer so much programs and services that can help you. Um, our programs are separated into two categories, which is career development and job placement. And we tend to focus on the career development aspect of it for first year students. So we encourage our first year students to do individual career counseling. And what this does is it assists you in finalizing, fine tuning and confirming your career choice. 
Uh, we also offer self-assessment, and this is a computerized career-assisted program that can be accessed anywhere um, if you have internet access. And what this program does, it gives you the different career options based on your interests, your values, and your abilities. So you are able to confirm um, your career choice or you're able to highlight additional interests and additional career options that you may be interested in. And we always try to tie the self-assessment with the individual career counseling. So we do encourage you to do the self-assessment before contacting us for the individual career counseling. Um, what the self-assessment does, it's it's it helps you to choose different employment areas. It highlights the different qualifications. It provides videos, um, and it just helps you to confirm your career decisions and even help you to confirm your second choice or third choice that you can look at even after you have completed your medical sciences degree. Um, and we strongly, we strongly encourage first year students to get involved and do the self-assessment. It's quite easy and it takes about five minutes. Another career development program that we have that we encourage our first year students to take part in is our World of Work seminars. And with the onset of COVID-19, you know, um, all of our programs will be delivered online. So our World of Work programs will be delivered through online platform. You know, we'll be using YouTube, Zoom, IG, Instagram Live, et cetera. What these World of Work seminars do is they focus on job hunting skills, helps you to prepare for an interview. Uh, we look at the labor market needs and we fine tune elements of what an employer expects from a UE graduate. Additionally, we give career portfolios to students to help them plan their career throughout their tenure at the University of the West Indies. In terms of job placement, we focus on part-time employment for our UWI students. We can't give you full-time jobs, but our application process is online and the applications open next week, which is the first, the first school date in September. Um, and for part-time employment, you must be informed that you're only allowed 12 hours per week um, if it is you're doing part-time hours on the campus. But again, everything is dependent on what is happening with the current pandemic. And as you know, we have to alter and amend each week, each day, um, based on the numbers that we're having. Um, we offer summer employment as well, and it's the same application form that you use for part-time employment, um, and that opens as well in September. We always encourage students to apply from now for summer for next year because, you know, the earlier application is given, the better it is. We facilitate overseas work and travel agencies. I, I'm just mentioning this. Um, because we don't know what's happening next year for the work and travel. But just to let you know that we facilitate them, we ensure that they're registered with the Ministry of Labor, et cetera. And some of these include like Joyce, um, Student Work and Travel, et cetera. But again, everything here in terms of the summer work program is dependent on COVID-19. Um, I'm not sure how many of you are aware of JAMVAT. Um, Jamaica Values and Attitudes, and that is a program by the Jamaican government to assist students with tuition. On approval, you get 30% of your tuition on completion of your 200 voluntary hours, um, and that has been heavily used by medical students, uh, medical sciences students, uh, but their application process opens early. So it closes off, starts about March every year and ends off at May. Sometimes they extend their application process um, and then we will uh, disseminate that information. But the JAMVAT program has proven to be a very efficient program in helping with tuition costs. Um, so those are some of the main programs that you will tap into as first year students. We offer resume clinics, interview um, updates, interview tips, 
we help you with your application letter and this is on a daily basis. Um, and everything that we have to offer will be offered online um, through play or email, which is placement at uwimona.edu.jm, uh, placement.careerservices at gmail.com. All our application process part-time and summer is online um, at our uimona um, email address, which is my spot dot mona dot ue dot edu slash placement and that's forward slash we're on social media or pages placement and career services on facebook on twitter it's at ue placement at instagram it's ue underscore placement we also offer services through our live support which is um, a tab on our website where you can get immediate access to an employer um, an employee at placement and care services. So we look forward to assisting you, especially during this period in transitioning to the university and in helping you to transition out of the university. So we ask you to keep in touch with us and I thank the medical sciences faculty again for inviting us to do our presentation. Um, any questions I will answer if you have any. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Francis. Um, I don't see any questions so far, but thank you. I will get back to you if there are questions. Thank you. All right, our next presentation is um, by Ms. Palmer. So who's going to talk to you about registration guide? Ms. Palmer, you may begin. Hey, good morning. My name is Moya Palmer and I'm from the Jamaica Medical Students Association. I am the Vice President of Internal Affairs. And before I get into registration, I'm just going to tell you a little more about the Jamaica Medical Students Association. So we represent the MBBS students of Jamaica. However, we still do um, collaborative work with other members of the faculty. So when you see my PowerPoint, it will have a lot of the courses for MBBS programs, but don't fear, the registration can be applied to all programs. Additionally, um, the link to the presentation that I will be sharing with you will be on our Instagram and Twitter pages if you don't quite get to register right now. Juna, turn on that little. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm mute it, little, please. Okay. So today we'll be starting with your registration guide. So these are the courses that you need to register for first year if you are in the MBBS program. These are the courses for semester one. You have fundamentals of this disease and treatment, embryology, histology, introduction to molecular medicine, musculoskeletal system, cell biology, and introduction to medical practice. So some of you guys may have some overlaps with this where you will also be registering for this, these courses even though you're not in MBBS. And these are the courses that you're supposed to register for semester two. Now I've put the list of courses for semester one and semester two, because it's advised that you register for all your courses at the start of the year. So regardless of the semester that they're in, just register for them at the start of the year so you don't forget. This usually applies to MBBS students. I'm not sure if the other programs um, have any sort of reasons why you couldn't apply for all the courses at the start of the year, but this is highly recommended for MBBS students. So first you're going to have to go to, to the SAS page. So you know, the student administration search services page, you would type it in, in your browser, you could just type in SAS UEMONA and or when you get this PowerPoint, you could just click this link and it will take you there. When you get there, you'll enter your ID number and password. So your password will be in the format of year, month, and day. You'll see that when you go on top. Also, I forgot to tell you, if you want to follow, follow along, you can. So you can try and log into your SAS and see if it works. Sometimes you might 
not have your password work at the start. Sometimes it happens like that. You just have to contact the live support on the page and they will rectify that for you. So don't be alarmed if you try to log in and you try to use your date of birth as your password and it doesn't work, just remember to contact the live support on the page. It's a green button at the bottom of the page that says live support if you're having any issues logging in. Then you're going to go to student services. After which you're just going to click registration and you're going to look up classes to add. So as I said, this is the same for everyone, for all the programs in the medical sciences faculty. However, this is where it gets different because now when you're looking at classes to add, you either have to enter the course code or if you know the CRN for the course. So we're going to search by term and then you're going to click semester one. So it might look different on your computer, but when you click search by term, you should be seeing the semester options. After that, you're going to click medical sciences. So you're going to click medical sciences if you're registering for your medical sciences courses. If you're not registering for your medical sciences courses, if you're registering for things like your foundation courses, those are like CRIT, Caribbean civilization, those are the mandatory courses that you have to do. If you're registering for those, then you would find the department that those courses fall under. So let me go over that again. So when you get to this part, you put medical sciences if you're registering for medical science courses. So that's if you're in PharmD, MBBS, physiotherapy, those courses you will put medical sciences for. However, if you're registering for other courses outside of the faculty, you're going to put the faculty for which the courses fall under. For example, if you were doing Caribbean civilization, that would for, fall under found, found, that would be a course code. So you'll see found in front of the course code for it it would fall under humanities and education. So you'd have to look under there. Don't worry, we'll provide you with a document for this. Then you will scroll to the bottom of the page and click course, course search. You can click advanced search where you can just enter the CRN for the course and it takes you directly to the stream of the course that you want. For MBBS, it doesn't matter what stream you're in, and we don't normally focus on the CRN, so it's just okay to click course search. But if you know the CRN, for example, for your foundation courses, if you want to end up in a particular stream, that's the best way to go. So you click advanced search and enter the CRN, but that's only if you want to end up in a particular stream. As I said, I know for MBBS, you don't, it doesn't matter what stream you're in because we're all in one class. So you could just go through the regular course search. Then you're going to view the sections for the course you'd like to register for. So under this, you will see the days as well as you'll see the sections for the course, for, for example, your labs, lectures, tutorials. So you're going to select the boxes for the required lectures, labs and tutorials. So this is important because you have to register for every aspect of the course. You have to register for all your labs, for all your lectures, for all your tutorials. This applies to every program in medical sciences. So make sure you find out from your faculty rep what, what components you need to do for each course for this year, for your first year, so you can register for the sections accordingly. You do not want to click exam only. Exam only will register you only for the exam and you don't want that to happen because when it becomes time to do the exam, it will say that you're not registered for the course. So you have to make sure that you're ticking off your lectures, labs and tutorials. For MBBS, the name of the instructor does not matter because we have many different instructors coming in. So you will see different names. It does not matter. You'll experience all of them. So you don't have to click a specific one. 
What you will see though is that when people start registering, you'll see different streams. This is for MBBS, by the way. If you'll see different streams starting to full up, don't be alarmed because as I said at the start of this, for MBBS, we're all in one class. So just click whichever stream is empty. It does not matter. Days do not matter since we have one timetable. It might be different for the other programs. So if there is a specific teacher that you need to look out for for your program, please look out for that. If you need to register for a specific stream or a day, this is the area where you look out for that. You will see Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Thursday will be represented by R. I know that confuses some people sometimes. So you're not going to see a T for Thursday. You're going to see R. Don't, don't, don't worry. It's Thursday. So if you need to choose the day for your course and it's a Thursday, it's represented by R. Also, um, yeah, so yeah, I covered that. Then you're just going to scroll to the bottom of the page and click register. And then you're going to return to the menu at the top of the page and you would have registered for that course and then you repeat for all your courses. So you would do this for a se semester two if you were doing it for semester one before. Now, I know that you guys may not have been able to get all of this with me just explaining it to you. So this PowerPoint is available for you to use at your own leisure and just walk down, you can walk through the steps when you actually get your credentials, if you sort out your login information, you could just walk through it and do it. The link for this information will be available in the bios of our Instagram at JAMSA876 and our Twitter at JAMSA876. So what you'll do, you'll click that link. It will take you to a Google Drive where we not only have this presentation, but we also have a document with the list of courses and some recommended resources, as well as how to register for foundation courses and some information about the foundation courses so that you can make the right choice for which one is best for you. Additionally, I just wanted to point out that the information on the courses, the, the program specific courses on that document is for MBBS. For the other programs, please ask your faculty rep. So you can message the UE MedSci page, the Guild page, to, to ask them to refer you to your faculty rep and they will give you course specific information for you if you need that, if you don't have that already. So I'm finished now, thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Palmer, and thank you uh, for making it available. I'm sure many persons will have questions and we will be able to go and review your presentation. Thanks again. Yes, thank you. Um, Ms. Robinson, you're there? Yes. Yes, um, another question is, how are Trinidadians to pay their commitment fees? All right, so for our international students, the most um, convenient option of paying would be the online UE e-commerce system or the wire transfer, where you can transfer funds directly from your bank to the university. To get the wire transfer information, once more, you can send us an email or contact us via any of our contact information and we send that information to you. Okay. Um, are there any other questions for Ms. Robinson? Can you post it now? I don't see anything, but um, as you said, if anybody has any um, questions that they can contact uh, billings and receivable. Yes, definitely. You can contact us and we'll get in touch with you as soon as we possibly can. Okay. Thank you very much, Ms. Robinson. No problem. Okay. 
So um, I have a couple of announcements to make. Um, unfortunately, Ms. Kadeen Campbell um, is not able to uh, do her a cultural activity today. So we will finish. Um, we will finish now. Okay. So um, the other thing is um, the individual programs will contact you about registration. But if you have any problems or any issues, please contact the admin admission section. Okay. Um, so as you know, we don't have orientation scheduled for tomorrow because it's our election here. So, but we will meet again on Friday. And please remember on Friday, you'll be going to your individual programs for their specified orientation sessions. Okay. So in winding up, um, I would like to thank all the presenters um, that presented today, Dr. Chambers, um, Mr. Tai, Ms. Robinson, Ms. Richards, Mrs. McCoy Johnson, Ms. Francis, and Ms. Palmer. Um, it was very informative and I hope the students took down notes, contact information. And um, I want to thank you students and parents and relatives and well wishes for joining us. Um, we, will, we will see you again on Friday. So till then, have a wonderful rest of the day and stay safe. Thank you very much.